Hello everybody, it's good to be with you today. My name is Elizabeth Sweeney and I'm a product manager on Chrome. I'm here today with my friend Jeremy from Zalando. Jeremy, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, hello Elizabeth. Um, yeah, so I'm an engineering manager at Zalando. Uh, for those who don't know us, we are like a fashion um, online uh, platform. Uh, we are serving over 3000 brands to 17 countries and our main product is a website and an app. That's awesome. I was very curious to talk to you a little bit about your experience today um, about how you use tooling to improve Core Web Vitals. So based on your experience, what best practices can you share about using Lighthouse tooling to improve Core Web Vitals? Yeah, let's jump right in. I have a nice story to tell. All right. So. Last year, um, we, we conducted a very, large user, user, a very large user research study, uh, which revealed that um, we were kind of like perceived by our customers as a faceless giant and that our website did not really stood out. So when we had to, to ship a new release with like new features, like your virtual wardrobe, uh, which is a way to, to, to have like your, like, yeah, your wardrobe on Zalando and uh, to be able also to declutter it. Uh, we also wanted to apply like a visual facelift to the website and be like more playful. So we had this custom fonts, we had this color snapping feature where our images are kind of like matching with the pages background. So to be a bit more playful. Um, we also took the opportunity when we did this release to have like a more centralized uh, way to, to, to ship feature as scales with highly reusable set of components. Um, you can also learn all about this if you're curious in our engineering blog. Uh, but of course, like like anything in software engineering and these big releases, uh, like it didn't really go as as smooth as we planned. Uh, in fact, uh, when we when we tested this new release on our like beta test beta users, the website like showed that it was much slower. Um, so if you see on the on the right side, uh, we have a kind of like these tables and um, we have this like label. Uh, Role, which is the name, which was the name of our release, and you can see like you, it looked like pretty red uh, over there. Um, in fact, like we were measuring first contentful paint and also what we call primary hydration, which for us is kind of like a way uh, because we use React is a, it's kind of like the React uh, hydration time or like when the hydration is kicked in on the client side after server side rendering. Uh, this was the metrics we were using at the time, so. Of course, we didn't want to leave it at that. We wanted to, to fix that release and like uh, deliver these new exciting features to our customers. Uh, so we set up this performance task, task force and we're starting to work, in, to work on performance improvements. And for that, of course, we used AVD like Chrome DevTools. Uh, we are big fans of this performance uh, tab, uh, which is very nice to see like your performance bottlenecks. Uh, but as, as we kind of like started iterating, it was very hard to know what were the most impactful leads to follow and what was the most impactful things to, to fix. Uh, in fact, actually, since we didn't have like very nice uh, like performance feedback at this point, we had to to, to experiment or to try d different things and to release again to production so that we could measure with our users on this field data on our real users data, uh, which essentially meant that like we had this one day performance feedback loop and every day we had this kind of like tables like day to day so we could report the progress, but we were not exactly like uh, iterating as fast as fast as we think we should have. And we wanted really like to to, uh, to to be able to ship this release faster to get it out. Um, so we knew at this point we needed a better way to measure performance. Um, we were already, as I mentioned, like using uh, Chrome tools, especially like Lighthouse audits, but we were using them like more on a local setup. And of course, my local setup is not represent representative of my user uh, on my user setup on the field. We know that most of our users are actually using our website on mobile, for example, and maybe not on the good connections. Um, so we, we needed a way to have this more reproducible setup in this lab environment. Um, so we had very early, we had eyes on Lighthouse CI, um, but the integration efforts at, at this point, just to save our release were actually deemed like, okay, like we, we won't be able to integrate this very nice suit uh, out of the box. So we started uh, with the first step with Lighthouse as a node module. Um, this enabled us to, to when we deployed, when we made changes and we were able to deploy our like GitHub branches uh, to production, I mean, or to production like environment, we were able to test on this setup, which was more like as a service. This gave us a very small feedback loop at this point, like around like one hour. And as you see, spoilers, uh, we were able to get those numbers back to, 
to green and save, and save our release. But we, we also didn't really want to, to leave it at that in the sense of now we had the opportunity to not only be like uh, reactive towards performance, but become a bit more proactive. Um, so as I said before, we wanted to integrate with Lighthouse CI. So after that release shipped, we had a bit like more like rest time on the infrastructure team. So we set out to, to do this proper integration. So we did an integration with our GitHub status checks in our GitHub enterprise. We also like set up this like nice uh, Lighthouse CI server. So we have like now timeline of performance. Now what this means is that every developers, when they are shipping web uh, features on our website, when they are making pull requests, they have this like nice performance uh, feedback on their pull request, and um, they can also we can also set thresholds on our most critical pages, like our product detail page. Um, we also wanted to increase uh, awareness on uh, core web vitals and to move towards reporting more user centric cent centric metrics, because as I mentioned before, we are measuring React adoption time, but our users don't really care about when React is addressed on the client side. They, 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 care, um, they, they care when they, they are able to click on, on a button, for example, and when they are able to add their items to the cart. And for that, like FIDs from Core Web Vitals or like the equivalent in the lab data with uh, total blocking time is much more relevant. So that's why we also wanted to make this shift on this awareness. And having these nice dashboards with kind of like the recommended guideline uh, standing out is also a good way to engage with our stakeholders and like to, to make improvements. Um, so I would say like for us, um, in a nutshell, this lab and field data are very complementary. Uh, first, because your field data is still very relevant because this is a final judge. This is what your users like uh, perceive or like this is how user experience your website and production. So this is this is still needs to be in the picture. But for us, this having this lab data was was really a way to reduce this performance feedback loop to something on like around 15 minutes. Um, we also now consider performance as a feature. So um, it's okay to go iterative, like in any feature. So we started with this Lighthouse as a node modules. Now we have this Lighthouse CI integration. What matters now that like in any feature, we have non regression in place with this GitHub status checks. And also that we also measure it very early in the development. Because again, like test, when you catch a bug early, it's also much cheaper to fix. Um, so in the end, like after slowing down the website, I think we kind of redeemed ourselves uh, using Lighthouse CI, and I hope that this gives opportunity for other people to try it out. Thank you. Well, thank you for sharing sharing your experience with that. Honestly, it is just endlessly exciting for me to see you using Lighthouse in this way. It just like it it excites me to no end. Um, I wanted to ask a few questions. First is. If you were sitting down with somebody who was you know, just getting started with trying to think about how to integrate performance and tooling into their, you know, into their setup, what would you recommend as just the first step to get started? Okay. Um, so actually, one of the first step I recommend is to have a session with you. I mean, I remember like we had a session back in the days where you presented actually Core Web Vitals and the, and the ecosystem around it because it didn't come out of nowhere. And I think like what you mentioned was like, just start by measure, measuring. So go to those page mm -hmm. speed insights, input your most important pages and start to get this feedback. Also, what, what people can do, it's very easy to set up, is to go to, to the Core Web Vitals GitHub page. And it's very easy to integrate in your website and to report these measurements. Like it was, it was, it was very easy to set up. It's like, it's like a one hour task. And you're ready, then you can plot it on the dashboard and get started. And then as you gather this data, now you can look around at all the tooling and ecosystem and build upon it. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I would recommend. Yeah, that's, that's very solid. As I, I'm curious, as after you have kind of gotten this, uh, the setup it, it instrumented, is this now part of your design process? So as you are thinking about what features you're building out, you know, as, as for instance, you know, maybe product managers or marketing are thinking about what functionality they want to bring to users, is performance now a part of the conversation? How do you see this integration changing that, that aspect of how you work? So, I mean, like in any big company, sometimes it's not the same team, like maintaining the whole infrastructure and like shipping the new features. Uh, we are more like enabling uh, other teams. And sometimes we are not always part of the, all these early discussions on design or like new functionalities. Uh, but now we are much more confident because what happens is that when 
this feature start to see the light or we, we start to, to test, to test them out. This GitHub status checks actually can, can give us like early warnings, uh, if performance is not there. So I would say we are not there exactly at the top of the pyramid where we want, where we want this performance integrating by design or like everybody is aware of it by default, like the product manager. But actually now that the fact that maybe developers, we actually get feedback during maybe like retrospective. Oh, actually these features were delayed because it didn't make the performance threshold of the, let's say, infrastructure team. My, our hope is that on the next release or on the next cycle, the, the product manager or product owner will take it as an input and actually like it will actually derive from there. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And the last question for you is, you know, where do you want to go from here in terms of performance tooling or, you know, what, what is the next exciting thing that you're keen to, to dig your teeth into? Yeah. So, um, the thing is, as I mentioned, we are kind of building this infrastructure. We have like a front end engineering team of around 50 to 60 developers, uh, which is, which is quite large. And we don't believe in this one size fit all and different pages have different requirements in terms of performance. So actually now what my team is exploring is more like to give like more granular control on people contributing to the website and also this lighthouse CI integration. So they can set up like their, their performance thresholds on different pages. They can also set different throttling mechanism. And the idea is also with that to also give more like performance ownership to the development team themselves, like so that actually it can be also included as part of the whole life cycle. And we have also this idea of like, it's, it's nice in Zalando that different teams can contribute to different premises, but then like if, if every team would own their own performance, they would be able to be the, self, the guardians of performance as well. So yeah, that's, that's exciting. So just giving back like the ownership of performance on a, on a scale, thanks to this tooling. Awesome. Well, I look forward to hearing about that when you do it. <laughs> um, in the meantime, thank you again so much for taking the time to be with us today. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you.